There was a time <clears throat> not too long ago when I worked as a janitor. It was just out of high school. And I worked in this big office building by myself, cleaning up the building, dumping trash, wiping off tables, all that stuff. And there was never anybody there. It was a huge corporation. They had this big, awesome copier in the photocopy room. And it could color copy, it could reduce, enlarge, copy both sides. And I had this comic book that I was working on that I thought it would be awesome if I could just only show it to people or my friends or distribute it. Um, not too many copies, just like maybe 10 or 20 copies. And so one night I took my artwork without asking any permission. <laughs> I just brought it with me and plopped it in the room there and started reeling out uh, photocopies of each page and collating them. Meanwhile, I'm running off to do my duties as a janitor and get the building cleaned up and um, I brought everything back together nearly left some artwork sitting on the copier bed that glass plate underneath I almost shit when I saw that happen but I pulled it off didn't get fired <laughs> took it home and um, mission accomplished because I had no money to take this stuff out to a printer and have it done so that's my story about doing something a little bit under the table to get something done. At the end of this tutorial about inking, I want you to put something in the comments about something that you might have done in your past related to comic books to uh, get the job done, so to speak, that maybe you're not too proud of, but um, of course stuff that can't get traced back to you. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that little story. Here is the tutorial. Okay. To do the uh, inking on these pages the old school way with the pen right on the board, I use the old speedball nibs and the holder that it comes in. They come in a variety of tips. I'll get to that in a second here, but they fit onto the holder like so. And what I go with is kind of a worn out tip of the A5. And it has a broader tip on the end there that you can see. Here's a newer one. As a finer tip. So I start with the thicker one, the old worn out one, to do the wide lines. And then the narrower lines with the newer one. And then for even narrower, tinier lines, I go with a crow quill. Fits in the holder just like the others. As you can see, it has a very fine, delicate line. Then for doing shadows and filling in large areas of black, I just pick one of these big tip calligraphy nibs and just use that to kind of scrub, scrub, scrub into the areas that are going to be blacked in. Here's how I show how to make an offset to keep the edge of the pen from getting ink smeared all over the straight edge, whether it's a ruler or a triangle, what have you. You just bend it with uh, needle nose pliers. There's my tool, and it fits into the holes on the edge there. I can make one for you and send it to you for five bucks. <laughs> It's tricky making it at first, but after I played around with it, there we go. You see how it will ride up against that paper clip rather than the pen itself, preventing the ink from uh, getting all over the place. I use Rapidograph ink. You can always use, also use a Coinor ink. It's nice and black. It's more expensive, but hell, just use it because you're going to spend hours on these pages anyways. And then I converted a cap to a magic marker with a eyedropper into a very small reservoir holder. And this little doodad fits on the edge of my drawing board. Like this, I do, did two uh, hooks and cram it up in there and I got a really fast, convenient, easy to reach, tiny little reservoir for the inks. Also, I made a little cork to hold the ink inside, keep it from drying. And then um, 
when your ink gets thick on the nib, you want to have a little dish of water, jar or something that you can dip it into to get it started again. Then I'll show you real quick here. This is what how it works here. You just draw that against the edge like so. I got corner pockets I made out of old envelopes. I just cut them open and um, you can see there they're just uh, cut out of an envelope and the insides kind of cut away where the the bar here is going to slide. This drawing table is turned sideways. Normally they go the other way, but since comic books are always going to be basically a vertical format, I'm comfortable with working on it this way. And I kept the, the ruler on here as is, so that's one way you can rig that up. Now, I got this page from last time, all penciled up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start inking it. The first step of inking is to do the gutters. That's the um, separators here. I like to do several pages at once. So normally I'd have like three or four, maybe five pages penciled. That way the ink can be drying on one page while you're working on the other. And these pockets are really good because then you can slip boards in and out. This is just simply Bristol board. I like a uh, smooth Bristol board. Vellum picks up too much ink. The next step is to do all the circles, ellipticals, and round things. What you'll need for that is a technical pen that comes named Micron. Um, it's made by Pigma. They come in all colors. You want black. This one's uh, an 8. And this one is a 5. I presume that means 0.5 millimeters and 0.8 millimeters. The tips are like in the 0.5, it's pretty, let me get in there. Well, it's pretty fine. So the, the next thing you do then is with the use of elliptical sheets, circles, you do all the round things. I'll do these billiard balls with the uh, with the five. There we go. Like that. Sink in the eight ball. And the reflection on there, that's also round. That's good. The next step after this is to do the straight lines. The reason why you do the round lines first is that it's easier to match a straight line to a round line you've drawn rather than trying to make the round line fit the straight line. Like for example, uh, up here, the beer bottles, the bottoms, I'm going to do those with the elliptical set. And then later on, on the edges, I'll do the straight lines to match that up. Okay, so I have the circles, ellipticals all inked in. I'm going to start doing the straight lines. Let me zoom in a little bit here and demonstrate what I mean. You can go back and use your triangles that you had before, any kind of straightage will work. Sometimes the smaller the better. Like I have this little tool. Let's move this out of the way. Always good to line up your pen where it's going to end. Okay. And let's see, we have the beer bottles up here too. I'll show you real quick here. See, I'm lining it up to the edge of that circle I drew. Lining up the tip. This little paper clip offset here makes the edge of my straight edge, just as it sounds, offset. So I have to remember to 
keep it parallel with the line I'm inking. And basically that's it. You just keep going around, finding all the straight lines. Sometimes you can use the actual bar here on the on the drawing table combined with the triangle if it if you know that it's a perfect 90 degree or zero degree. You just go all around and get those things. Here's another trick I use to do perspective lines with ink. Also this works with pencil. I have a piece of plastic that has a hole punched through it with a thumbtack and then an eraser on the end of it. And what I'll do is I'll find the vanishing point. In this case, I forgot where it was, so I gotta kind of pick out a couple lines here and just find out where it was again. Okay, I think it's right there. Let's see if that. Yeah, more or less right there. Okay. Then I take some masking tape on the edges of these things, the two tabs that stick out of the plastic. Tape that thing down. Keep the thumbtack right where the vanishing point is. Now you're going to cover up with the tape a certain portion of the board. That's okay because there's no lines right there. But this is a real cool tool. Now I can just ride it on there and pick out all the lines. It's not perfect. It's not going to line up exactly right. The key then is to think about where does the line have to hit and then make sure it does right there. Here I got need to get a bigger edge here because the pool table is lined up with the building so So that's one neat little trick. Going round and round and round. There's a few up here. The eraser on the end of this thumbtack helps to compensate for the offset on the tip of my ink pen. More or less keeps it in place. Another neat trick, if you don't want to do perfectly straight lines, yet it has to follow a general uh, straight path like these rafters here. Let's say I want them to look like weathered old wood. Well, just take your straight edge and wait a little, little bit as you're drawing the line. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Do that a little bit. It's good for brick walls, rough edges of anything that basically are straight, but you don't want it to be machine perfect straight. With these pen tips, the tendency is for it to be strong with the hard pressure and then when you release and push away high pressure. So you really want to work to those strengths. It can also be thin, thick, depending on how much you push down on it. When you get to like explosions, think about moving the board around, you know, getting at the right angle, like I said. So when you're inking things that are important, like a person's hands, keep in mind that the it's good to have the thick lines on the bottom. And the thin lines at the top, that will give you the illusion of three-dimensional space of your characters, your people having some heft to it. So if you're working with the pen tip that has the heavier line, stick to doing the bottoms more than the tops. Maybe save the tops for the thinner pen tip. 
Now I'm ready to start inking the lines proper. I did all the straight lines and all the circles. I got the gutter lines done. A tool that helps me to keep my hand off of the page to keep from smearing the wet ink is a straight edge that has an eraser on one end and a piece of wood on the other. And I rig this up so that it rides on this little metal strip on the edge. Then with the clamp, just simply clamp her down. I can also hold it with my free hand. And this will be something I can put my hand on. That'll help me work on the pages. I go with a pen that's a little more worn out than the other ones that I've used for a while. The tip is getting broader, so it makes a wider line. A brand new calligraphy nib. We'll do a finer line. And then I just go in and ink all the lines that I feel will be from medium to large. Try to get most of them. Following the contours. And there's a good angle to attack from. Sometimes it's good to uh, go from the bottom up, other times you draw it to you. If you find that it's easier to take the, the page itself out, turn it upside down. Sometimes I'll take the whole board, since this is not permanently attached to the table, I'll turn that upside down too. And sometimes it's just easier to work upside down to get that perfect kind of arc. That, this is something that you'd have to develop over practice and kind of get used to the tools. Now, there's certainly going to be some detail as I'm going in finer and finer here. Skip ahead to these people back here. Maybe there'll be some lines that should be fairly wide, fairly thick, but then there comes a point when it's a little too fine, I'll skip over that and just keep working on the lines that are from medium to heavy. Yeah. You, uh, you fill it with the eyedropper in the little reservoir on the edge here. This is the older nib that's um, a little bit more, more worn out, that's making the heavier lines. And it's just a matter of going in as far as you can, keeping your hand resting on that support I showed you. And uh, inking lines that can be a little bit heavy. Maybe the bottom half of things, people, objects. You just keep going around, like you see on the leather jacket here, I kind of went to town on that, a little bit on the hair. And then up in here in the background, these lines need to be finer. So that's where I kind of hold off. And I'm going to use the, the tip that's um, a little bit newer, that has a finer edge to it. Okay, then um, here's the Pro quill pen that can make the really tiny lines. Lines so tiny they may not be picked up on the scanner, but that's okay because you're you're in control of what you're drawing visually. There's really no limit to what you can put in the background. With a pen with a thicker line, things get really chunky and difficult. The thin line like this, you can really put in that fine detail in the background, and it scales very nicely. It looks like it's appropriate to the scale of the background. Things don't look chunky or inappropriate. So you can see how that works. Then. These are the tiny, tiny lines all around here. I use that other pen with a little bit larger lines 
So the next step is going to be putting in the shadows. So the next pen to use is this calligraphy nib that has a like an oval tip to it. You can use a round tip, anything that's got a big uh, surface area to it. And with that, you find all the areas that are supposed to be black, shadow, silhouettes, and this is a real fast way of filling in all that stuff. Um, let's see if I can, right down here. Work in a scrubbing motion. And you know guys, if, um, if you had a huge area of black, I'd be tempted to not ink it in, but just simply uh, define it well, give it a border, and then later on in Photoshop, just use the paint bucket tool <laughs> and just use Photoshop for that. It's up to you. And the next step is to take a big eraser there's an eraser called Moo, that's good. This one's a Milan eraser. And you just go in and take out all those pencil lines. Let the ink dry thoroughly before you start doing this so you'll regret it, you'll get all these smears. And what you'll see happening is it starts looking naked. Like the lines lose their nuance and their subtlety and you've got this boom black and white black and white and you'll see all the parts that are missing need a little touch up need a little help and i'm not going to erase the whole page but i'll just go into this one panel here and i'll show you then what's next you take the like a fairly um, fine pen tip. And you just go in and fix anything that needs fixing, lines that are missing, little nuance, little touch up here and there. You get the point. And with that, you're done. You're now officially knowledgeable about how to ink. Inking a page. For me, it consists of eight steps. The first step being drawing out the, the gutters. That's the def doing the black lines to define all the panels. The second step would be to use your elliptical set for the circles. And then the third step, all the straight lines that you're using a straight edge to, to um, connect the circles or to define things that have a straight edge. Fourth step then is the thick lines the fifth step would be the thin lines. The sixth step is even thinner still, the tiny, tiny lines I was showing you with the Crow Quill pen. The seventh step is using the big tip pen and putting in all the shadows and the black areas. And then finally, the eighth step would be to erase the whole page and go back, I'd say, with the, the thin line version I was showing you, and just going back and fixing up stuff that got, might have got missed in the inking process. Thank you very much for watching this. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube and see uh, further updates and more coming up on a weekly basis. Also, I have links below to my website and to my Patreon page. If you're curious about um, purchasing the original artwork for Mayfield 8, my biker comic book story, that's available there. Also on my website, I'll have up, if not now, very soon in the future, art cards, hand color, watercolor, um, cards depicting like scenes out of the biker story as well. Thank you very much for watching this and I hope that I'll see you again on the next time.